Hello. So you don't even fit on the screen. Ah, oh, Marie is there. <laughs> yes, hello, I am here, yeah. Okay, are you ready, Joe? Yeah. Excellent. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to what would have been the second uh, uh, the second uh, talk session before everything got shuffled around. Uh, this session is um, uh, it's only uh, online uh, presentations. Um, uh, mostly for people uh, uh, from Europe uh, presenting, uh, for whom the uh, well, the time difference is really awkward. Um, uh, we hope we don't have the technical problems we uh, had yesterday, but this morning it was pretty good, so uh, let's see how we go. Um, uh, technically, uh, for the speakers, uh, when you go, uh, you want to go to the next slide, you have to ask for it, and then a uh, technical person in the back will do that for you. And uh, uh, talks are at 10 minutes, and uh, at two minutes, uh, after eight minutes, I'll tell you that you have got uh, two more minutes. And uh, yeah, so first speaker is uh, um, Marie Grosjean from uh, GBIF, and I'll just, so Marie, can you do your title yourself? Ah, oh, ongoing work with the Global Registry of Scientific Collectors. Uh, thank you, Marie, the floor is thank yours. Thank you, can you hear me all right? Is the sound okay? Yeah? Okay, okay good. Um, interrupt me otherwise. Um, hello, everyone, um, people online, and I don't know how many people there are on site, but if there are any, hello. Um, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about the ongoing work we are doing with the Global Registry of Scientific Collections, which is also called uh, GR Cycle for short. And uh, I am a data administrator at the GBIF Secretariat. Next slide, please. Yeah. So um, for those who aren't familiar with GR Cycle, I'll explain a little bit what it is. It's a registry about that contains information about physical scientific collections, um, uh, what they contain in terms of uh, what they're, sorry, <laughs> got interrupted, now I muted my notification. Um, so physical scientific collections, not necessarily just natural history collections, they can be archaeological collections, for example, and has information about what they contain, where they're located, and mostly they, there are contacts, uh, information about uh, for those collections, so you know who to contact if you want to uh, borrow a specimen, for example. Also contains information about the institution that hosts those collections. GR cycle is also a reference for collection and institution codes and identifiers, and it is community curated, meaning that anyone can contribute information to uh, this registry. It also has an API, which allows to access and edit information um, uh, for those institutions and collections. Next slide, please. So when GBIF inherited GR Cycle, which was originally developed and maintained at the Smithsonian Institution, um, we thought it would be uh, quite interesting if we could link specimens published on GBIF to collection institution in order to enrich the information. And for that, we use uh, the collection and institution codes and identifiers shared uh, uh, via uh, uh, Darwin Core Archives and we try to find matches to institutions and collections. Next slide, please. Um, who is GR Cycle for? Uh, 
next slide. <laughs> well, what is next? So it's for anyone uh, in the community uh, to be able to find the collections that they are interested in. For example, taxonomists might want to find specimens for a particular species. And, um, and so this is another place where they can do so, um, where it's quite centralized. Uh, next, please. Yes, again, yeah. And it's also for institutions, and you can you can add two more. <laughs> there are two more points, yeah. Uh, it, it, those institutions can uh, be on GeoCycle and be more discoverable, be more findable, and also, next please, uh, be able to uh, showcase their work um, and their collections, even if they aren't digitized. Yes, please, next. <laughs> um, yes, again, one more. <laughs> Yeah, great. Um, it can also be used by external systems um, because we have so many codes and identifiers. Uh, it can be helpful to enable data linkage, as I showed in the example with occurrences published on GBIF linked to Jira cycle. And again, more slides. Yeah, you can. Yeah, great. Um, and it can also be helpful for national organizations um, in. The typical use case is uh, GBIF nodes uh, because it can help guiding some data mobilization efforts, trying to identify um, collections that uh, could benefit being brought into uh, GBIF and IDIC bio, for example. And it can help facilitate monitoring. On that note, I uh, strongly encourage you to uh, check the presentation from my colleague Lily in Symposium 14 uh, on Thursday, I think. Uh, because she talks a lot about the work that she and other GBIF contractors are doing for better representation of, um, of uh, collections in, in underrepresented regions, and also how to use the information in GeoCycle in order to bring more data into um, the public sphere, I'm going to call it. Yeah, next slide, please. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about what the, what is the roadmap that we have developed for the next year or so. Um, and it contains five items, and now I'll detail them. So next slide. Yeah, The first item we titled Review the Data Schema. And this is because right now in GeoCycle, there are lots of fields, and um, there are some vocabularies that uh, are an aggregation of, of different things. And some of the fields are redundant and we want to simplify a little bit and maybe discard redundant fields. And by redundant, I mean between institution entries and collection entries, there might be a redundant information. We also want to align uh, the, the fields with Latimer Core whenever possible and reuse vocabularies that already exist. I know Disco, for example, has been developing uh, the equivalent of the discipline vocabulary for institution. So it would be helpful if we didn't have all each our own vocabularies, but we could use the same one. So a few examples of fields that could be reviewed is the content type vocabulary. Um, and, uh, you know, we have like a field called active. So is it, is it relevant? If it's inactive, should it be in GeoCycle? So this is where we will ask some input from the community. And actually, we're, I'm already in touch with some people who are interested in working with this. But if you are also, please let me know. Um, the next slide, please. The second item on the roadmap, we titled Support Structured Collection Descriptors. And what we mean is that we would like to make the collection discoverables by discoverable by more dis descriptors. Um, and so for that, we are thinking one relatively straightforward way to do so would be to allow people to upload a table that would have uh, rough breakdowns um, for their collection. And it doesn't have to be, um, you know, your whole collection, the entire collection described per genera or per, per collector. It could be partial tables. Uh, for example, we could have one table where maybe I have a list of um, broad taxon groups um, for my collection, but then my student is working and has been looking at one particular drawer and made an inventory of all the species in that drawer, and they can upload that table as well. And the idea is that 
if I'm someone interested in this taxon group, I'll find the collection. And if I'm someone interested in a particular uh, species, then that will, was um, in this drawer, then I'll also be able to find the collection. So we want the collections to be more discoverable in that regard. And next slide, please. Yes, so those are other examples where um, of how it could look like. And uh, we have, for example, index abirum tables that could be put as tables, collection descriptor tables for collections. We could have collector collectors breakdown. Two more minutes, uh, Marie. What? What did you... two, two more minutes? minutes. Yeah, I'm almost done. Thank you. Um, and so, um, yeah. So, uh, so of course, we would have to use uh, standardized uh, standardized um, terms for that. So, uh, probably Darwin core terms and Matsumo core terms. Next slide, please. Uh, we will also want to make it possible to archive uh, survey results for institutions, and uh, those would be fixed in time. Right now, there are lots of them, but it might be difficult to find them. This would be a place where they could be um, archived and findable, not editable, just um, make it a place where the information can be accessed. Next slide, please. Uh, the fourth item on the roadmap is to establish a mechanism for regular community updates. And we already have a forum, a mailing list, and we will set up virtual meet meetups soon, um, about every four months. The next one will be announced uh, on the forum and on the mailing list. So if you're interested, you can subscribe there. I can put the links later in the, in the Slack channel. Next slide, please. So this is the one I'm not sure we'll have time to do, actually. I wanted to. Um, so uh, the last item on the roadmap is a new user interface for GR Cycle, and we actually have been working on it already, and it will be public at the end of the week. Uh, so I don't think I'll have time to play the video, <laughs> so it will remain a mystery. Um, but uh, I, I, I will announce the when it's public on the mailing list and on the on the forum, and you're very welcome to check it out. And unless uh, you want me to show it during questions, we can, I can also do. Um, and next slide, please. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let me know if you have any question or if you want me to show you the, the, the little video for the tour of the website. Thank you, uh, Marie. <laughs> Steve, are there any questions online? There is a, oh, in Slack. Oh, it's Slack. It's, it's the same idea. Marie, there's a question from uh, Rod Page. Are there any plans to link to Wikidata? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the screen disappeared. Um, so, uh, actually, I already attempted uh, to put. So, I mentioned that there are codes and identifiers for entries in GR Cycle. And so uh, for institutions, I already use the Wikidata tool for, um, from um, OpenRefine to uh, find uh, matches in Wikidata for as many institutions as possible. And I imported the identifiers in GR Cycle. So there are, I mean, I'm not sure I, I was able to link everything, but there are a number of, um, of uh, entries in GR Cycle, which can be found by using the Wikidata identifier. So that's one step, hopefully in the right direction. Um, I'm not sure if you have any more suggestions of how this linkage could work. We can see how it is, but at least, at the very least, you can search institutions by Wikidata identifiers for those that are actually associated with the identifiers. Yeah. Hopefully that answers the question. Okay. Any questions from the room? No, thanks very much, uh, Marie. Thank you.